Hey guys, welcome back. So, I this is the block that they just dropped off uh, a few hours ago. So, I got my bore gauges and my uh, micrometers and straight edges and magnaflux are out. And I thoroughly checked out the block. I'm not going to do all that on camera, but I got some really good news for you because this block is in absolutely beautiful shape. I mean, it's, it's uh, you know, somebody did machine work on it and this thing is just almost flawless. The bores are absolutely perfect as far as their size goes. No taper in the bores, it's, a, it's exactly 30 over. Really good cross hatch. Check the alignment on the, uh, the lower end. Check the, the main bearing bores for size and out around and taper and they're perfect uh, no cracks so this is a really good builder so this was probably a really good decision and I'll tell you why because the other block yes it was cracked but even if it wasn't cracked it's already a worn out 30 over and so we would have had to go 40 over possibly 60 over with that other block um, because the bores were real sketchy lots of wear and they're already 30 so now we know we've got a good 30 over, we got a really good basis, and this is, this is a really, really uh, nice block. So I feel much more comfortable about building this one, and they got a great deal on this. I, he's gonna be happy to find this out. This is a, this is a really good, solid block. Um, whoever did the machine work on this did an expert job. This is a beautiful bore job. I don't know if I could have done it any better myself. Um, maybe a tiny bit better, but. Okay, so the other thing is this. I've been, I've been kicking around the idea of these cylinder heads, and I, you know, I, it's been a, lo a long time since I've done an FE, so I kind of wanted to see what the current trend was. Um, so I, I Googled FE build, and there's a lot of really cool builds on the internet that some of the magazines, Hot Rodding, and some of these other, you know, performance shops have done. And I ran across one that was a stroker engine, which is exactly the same stroker kit or, or similar to the one we're gonna do. And one of the things that really kind of bugged me about it is they, were, they, they used the small head, the small port heads, the low riser heads on it. And I thought, you know, that's strange. Why would they, why would they use a low riser head? So in this article, they're talking about how that this is a truck motor and they wanna get torque out of it. And so I'm reading on the internet information from all these performance shops and some of the publications and everybody has a different opinion about the FE heads. And I thought, you know what, this, this is crazy. Some people say that the low rider heads are the best thing that ever come along and they're way better for a truck and they make more power and, and, and you know, and granted with, with that FE build, they dynoed it with the low riser head and they made 500 foot pounds of torque. Um, the horsepower was lower than that, but for a truck, you know, we don't care about horsepower. So, um, 500 foot-pounds of torque, that's pretty impressive. So I thought, hmm, interesting. So what I did is I, I decided that I was going to find out for myself. So we know that we have the C4 big medium riser heads on this. What I did is I took a C4 head and I took a C8 head, which is the smaller port, <clears throat> And I decided I was going to find out for myself. So I took them and I flow tested them. And I documented everything I did. And I'll be honest with you, I'm very, very surprised at what I found out. And I think you will too. So uh, check this out. This is really cool. Okay, so <clears throat> that was the low riser head, which is the truck head. Now we're going to pull that off and we're going to put the medium riser on there and compare our flow numbers.
Okay guys, so we've switched out our low riser head. We got our medium riser head on there and we're gonna flow this turkey in and we'll get some comparison notes on this thing. Here we go. All right, we've got our numbers. Let's do some math. Okay guys, so <clears throat> today we're gonna do some simple math. Now we, we went ahead and we did our, our flow testing on these 390 heads. So what we've got is we've got the C8AE casting, which is a smaller port, the low riser they call it. And then we have the C4AE head, which is a medium riser, the larger port that we looked at earlier. So this is what we came up with on the flow bench. So we flowed the heads the maximum flow on both heads was at 500 lift. So we opened the valve a half an inch, and this is what we came up with. Um, opening it further than half an inch on both heads had negative effects on flow. The flow numbers actually went down. So we wanna look at our maximum flow rate because we wanna calculate horsepower and see which one of these heads is the better head for making power. Okay, so I think you're gonna be surprised with the results here. So the flow numbers on the C8AE head were 213 CFMs. That's what it flowed at 500. And this, again, this is flowing at 28 inches of water. So the flow benches are set for different flow rates. 28 inches is kind of an industry standard. When you look in uh, Hot Rodding Magazine or, or Super Tuner Magazine or whatever you're looking at, most of the guys that are comparing heads are flowing their heads they got their bench set at 28 inches and that's why we did that because we want to compare apples to apples so we got 28 inches of draw on our our, our airflow on our bench we came up with 213 cfms at maximum is maximum flow for the c8 head the c4 head which is a larger riser we got 231 cfms quite an improvement so we gained some CFMs there because of the bigger port. So the next thing we want to do is we know that one CFM of air is going to give us 0.26 horsepower per CFM. Um, we know that. That's, that's part of the calculation. So we want to take our airflow because we want to calculate horsepower. So we're gonna take our airflow and we wanna multiply it by 0.26 to see how much horsepower we can make with, potentially with that, that amount of airflow. So we take 213 times 0.26 and we get 55.38 horsepower. Now that's one cylinder. We have a V8, so we have to multiply that amount of horsepower by eight. And that gives us a total potential horsepower for that head flow of 443 horsepower, okay? Now we go over to our C4 head. The C4 head, we have 231 CFMs times 0.26. That gives us 60 horsepower, just a slightly more than 60 horsepower per cylinder times eight, 480.48 horsepower potential. These are the totals. Now, but we're not done yet. See, one of the factors that you have to, you have to work into this is you have to work in the exhaust flow as well. We have something called percentage of flow. Percentage of flow is a pretty big factor in horsepower. To really compare these heads correctly, we wanna work our percentage of flow into these two different numbers here and see what we come up with. So what we had for airflow um, on the exhaust side of the C8 head, 171 CFMs. Okay, that's what we had on the exhaust side. The C4 head, surprisingly, was lower. It was 158 CFMs at 500 lift. So what we do with that number is we wanna know what percentage of the intake the exhaust is flowing because that affects horsepower. So what we do is we take our 171 and we divide it by the intake flow. We know that our intake flow is 213 on this one. So we're gonna take 213, we're gonna put that number first, and we're gonna divide 213 into 171, and that's gonna give us a percentage. Well, when you did that, 
what we came up with on this one is we had 80% of flow. So in other words, the exhaust on the C8 head is flowing 80% of what the intake flows. So that's a big factor in performance because anything that comes in has to go out. The percent of flow on the C4 head, surprisingly, was much lower. You can see we had 158 CFMs on the exhaust side of the C4 head. So if we take 158, right, and then we look at our flow numbers, which our max flow is 200, 231 CFMs. If we take 158 and we divide 231 into it, we get a 0.68 or 68% of flow. Now, let me tell you why those numbers are significant. The next portion of our formula, our percentage of flow, right? And we go back to our, our total horsepower number here. So our total horsepower number for the C8 head, 443, and, and the formula works this way. We've got 80%, so we go 4, 4, Three, that's our total potential horsepower and we multiply by the percentage of flow which is how this works 443 on your calculator it's 0 0.8 times 0 0.8 we come up with a total horsepower number of 354 horsepower okay so remember that number then we take our total horsepower over here, which is 480 times 0.68, and we get a total horsepower of 326. Look at that. So because of the exhaust, now the, the ticket or the key to the C4 head would be to port the exhaust, open it up and get that percent of flow up. But according to the flow bench numbers, the C4 head actually has less potential to make horsepower in stock form than the C8 head. Not only that, the C8 has a smaller intake port, which has much higher velocity, so it's gonna give better torque at the low end. Building a 390 FE motor, and you're putting totally stock heads on it, my choice is gonna be the C8 head. Now, if you wanna get the C4 heads and do some porting, this number would go way up. If you, got the, if, if you had 80% of flow on a C4 head, like, let's just do that hypothetically. Let's say you port the exhaust on this and you get the percent of flow up to 80%, which you could probably do with porting. Now, we'll see what we come up with. That is gonna raise this horsepower number up to around 385 horsepower, okay? So, and that, that's, that's pretty good for a stock motor. So these are realistic numbers. Um, and that's kind of how we do it to figure out now now there's a lot of other variables in here you got to keep you guys got to keep that in mind the size of the engine the compression ratio um, the how the engine's built the induction system the exhaust there's a lot of other factors in here these are just flow bench numbers that are giving us a ballpark figure of what the potential it possibility is for that head in stock form um, i'm going to go out on a limb here and say that the c8 low riser head it's actually gonna make more horsepower and a little uh, better low to mid-range torque because of the high velocity ports. My vote is for that C8 head right there if you're building, running stock heads. So hopefully this makes sense. I appreciate you watching. Make sure you like this video and subscribe. If you have any questions, ask. I know this is a lot of information, but um, on engines, everything's figured out with math. This is how we do it. So make sure you support this channel. I appreciate you, every one of you. Um, the addresses are at the bottom. And if you like what you see, oh, and by the way, just to let you know, I am going to pick up an LS motor today. <laughs> I'm gonna go look at it. It's a core that we're gonna do an LS build. I'm jazzed. Okay, so needless to say, I'm blown away. Um, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna recommend to, to 
the owner of the 390 that he go with with the uh, the low riser C8 heads because you know flow numbers don't lie and you know not only do they have more horsepower potential because of the exhaust flow but they have smaller ports so they're going to have really high velocity at low RPMs which means more low end torque and more overall torque a broader torque curve hence the you know the 500 foot pounds of torque on that stroker so um, and it, you know it doesn't matter to me I've got tons of FE heads I've got a whole storage shed full of these FE heads if by the way if you need any FE heads just let me know because I got I got pretty much every casting there is so putting on a C4 or a C8 makes no difference to me so so hopefully you enjoyed that um, I certainly did it was a learning experience for me um, I've flowed FE heads before but I never actually flowed the C8s and the C4s and did a comparison at the same time at the same flow rate on the same flow bench so so I thought that was pretty cool so thanks for watching I appreciate make make sure you subscribe I'm all dirty and by the way um, I did pick up an LS motor yesterday and we are going to do an LS build so those of you that are LS fans you're you're probably peeing your pants right now but anyway that's coming up thanks for watching I will talk to you soon I promise